What's up everybody, Will Borza here, the LA Recordist. It's the analog vlog. It's a vlog. Analog. So I'm taking just a few minutes away from mixing Austin Anderson to show you what is in the box of the DT1770 Pro by Bayer Dynamic. One headphone to rule them all. These are sort of the bigger brother updated version of the DT 770s, which are these guys. You might be familiar with them. Uh, these are classic. These are well known around the world, and I've had these for four or five years. They've served me well. I got the 80 ohm model, which I know a lot of you will probably scoff at, but whatever. Uh, and, and I mean, you can see how the label is starting to rub off. I've used them so much. Uh, these are sweet, and these are my go-to's, and I know exactly what these sound like. These sound a little different, but I dare say they sound a little better. All right, let's pop them up. Uh, first thing, this case here is nice, smooth, it feels cool, it's, it's heavy, but uh, there's no, it's not like a handle. You can't, it's not really practical to, to carry this around by anything. It's... Um, it'd be nice if there was a handle. However, when you pop it open, you get a really nice, great presentation of the headphones. Look at these bad boys right here. Oh my goodness. These are sexy headphones. Wow. So it comes with this sort of suede um, earpiece and in the box as well are two of these uh, leathery leatherette earpieces and you can switch them out from what I understand uh, from reading online and stuff the leathery uh, earpieces provide more bass um, mostly because they're creating a tighter airlock around your ears which to me, just in listening for a day or so in these, they don't need more bass with this with this suede stuff. So I think I'm probably never ever going to use these, but I might, but probably not. Other than that, this connector here on the bottom is a mini XLR, and that's how you connect the cable to them. You have the mini XLR, uh, female, this is male, and it just sort of snaps together, something like this. That was nice. And this particular cable is stretchy, which is really cool if you're plugging in, like I plug in to my headphones right here. I don't need 10 feet of cabling. So this is kind of perfect for my use, like this. Wow, really deadens um, I think manufacturing says that it deadens the room by uh, about 20 decibels, which is significant. Uh, I can hear myself in my head. That's weird. Okay, enough of that. So in addition to this stretchy cable, right there, it also comes with this, a totally straight uh, what is it, like 10 foot cable, you know, like two, two and a half meters, something like that. Also useful if you're just trying to like drag this across the room or something. This little pouch uh, to store whichever cable you're not using, Velcros to the inside, and again, that's your case. I, I don't find too much use in this, I'll probably use it for a couple weeks until I don't ever use it again because again there's no there's no handle or anything the DT 1770s have a quarter inch jack which unscrews to reveal an eighth inch jack and this I believe this is like spring loaded I can sort of feel a little tension there and you you have to push and then turn to put it back on uh, which is nice um, it's gonna be secure and these are these are 250 ohm resistance uh, headphones, which means that it's not 
best just to like plug them into your iPhone. That's not what these are intended for. Uh, they do sort of need some sort of headphone amplifier to work at their best. Uh, on the inside, the technology is called uh, Tesla 2 drivers. It's Bayer Dynamics, you know, cool new technology. And it sounds awesome. It's totally just mind-blowing. But yeah, if you get these, you are going to want some sort of headphone amp. Right now, I have this little DAC, the Apogee Groove, which is sweet. I was just doing a review of this a week or two ago, so you can check that out. Also, I can plug it into my Apogee Symphony or my PreSona Central Station, but either way, you do want some sort of amplification. As for sound, sonic characteristics, I can tell you confidently I've never heard reverb tails as clear as I have in these. The spatial awareness that you get listening through these is far superior to any set of monitors I've worked on. Well, I should say any set of monitors I've owned because I've worked on some pretty sweet monitors that made me feel like I had a band standing in front of me. But you can pretty much get that with these. I was listening to Sgt. Pepper's and the album, you know what was really weird to me is I could actually, for the first time, I could hear the sounds that the console were making. Sort of mixing artifacts that appeared because of things the console was doing. I could tell when a piece of tape ended and I could hear the difference between whether they took the fader and dropped the fader down real quick or they engaged the mute button. Like, you can hear the difference with these headphones, and you can hear where, like, you know, this guitar was living over here, and then whoop. Or the guitar was living over here, and then whoop. It's <laughs> really, really something else. If you ever get the opportunity, try these out. If you don't have a lot of money, maybe don't try these out, because these are the most expensive headphones I've ever owned. Um, second most expensive headphones I've ever worn myself, but my goodness, they sound amazing and they're worth every penny. This plus this is about a thousand dollars US, but it is a full-on mastering grade monitoring setup. So uh, I'm going to get back to working on mixing Austin Anderson. I'm going to be using this and this, and it's going to sound great. Austin's music gets released on January 1st, and I'll let you know when that happens. But as for tonight, I gotta go. So I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.